Everyone's freaking out about all of the rules here um, that's changing in the real estate community. In this video, and this is one time that I actually read a script because I want to make sure it's pretty perfect. It's going to tell you what is happening with the lawsuit, how it affects sellers, how it affects buyers, how it affects their agents, and what agents can do to protect themselves. It's going to break everything down in a very easy to solve manner. At the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you what you should be saying to a buyer in regards to compensation. The National Association of Realtors has settled in a lawsuit. What does this mean? I'm going to break this down right now. After negotiating for years, the Stitler Burnett case has come to a settlement. So if you're a real estate agent, especially a buyer's agent, now what? I'm seeing a lot of negative news around this settlement. Many of the people writing about it don't have a clue about what the settlement means. Much of what they're saying is based off of scarcity and fear, and most of it is just plain wrong. And it's easy to freak out when things are changing. And things are always changing, so chill out, relax. I have been in the real estate industry for 23 years. And while I was an active agent for 17 years, I averaged 134 homes, mostly representing sellers. I've sold over 2,300 homes in my career. I have so many real estate designations that don't fit on my business card. I've seen it all. So I'm talking to you about this as an expert. I'm going to clarify what is actually happening right now and what it means for sellers, what it means for buyers, what it means for both buyers and sellers, agents. I also wanna show you how it affects the global economy and professionals who support the industry. And I'm also gonna say what you need to do about it. I will not be talking specifically about commissions due to the antitrust laws. In the real estate industry, antitrust laws prohibit discussing commissions directly between realtors. These laws are designed to actually promote a fair compensation and prevent price fixing or collusion. When agents discuss commissions directly, it could be interpreted as an attempt to set standard rates across the industry, which is not good. So here's the basics of the lawsuit and the settlement. Bottom line, the National Association of Realtors, NAR, was in a legal battle defending practices that have long been basic in real estate transactions. The lawsuit challenged certain approaches to broker compensation. The proposed settlement modifies these practices. The National Association of Realtors has agreed to the settlement, but it still has to be approved by the courts. What's fascinating is that the lawsuit was actually brought against a multiple listing service rule called the Cooperative Compensation Model Rule the MLS model rule. And that MLS rule was introduced in the 1990s by consumer protection advocates to protect buyers and buyer representation. And now they're ruling really against it. It seems a bit counterintuitive to me, but hey, there's money involved and some very greedy people must see opportunity. So here we are. The sharks are coming out. Hi, I'm Lenny. What is next? What you need to know is that NAR did not admit any wrongdoing in connection with the MLS model rule. Some agents are up in arms that NAR didn't fight harder, but we aren't attorneys and we weren't in the room. NAR is the largest trade association in the United States with over 1.5 million active members. They have substantial lobbying power. The association also has a financial investment in promoting the best interests of agents because if they don't help realtors, Members will simply leave. During the settlement negotiations, NAR fought to release all members from liability for commission-related claims. Good news is, they were able to ensure that the majority, more than one million of its members, will be included in the settlement's release of liability. This release doesn't include Home Services of America and its related companies, the last corporate defendant still litigating at the Stitzer Burnett case. Changes for buyer's agents, what does this mean? If approved by the court, the settlement means that our industry will see some significant changes in regulations regarding broker compensation, commissions, offers through the MLS. These changes are actually expected to take effect by mid-July 2024. And I guarantee that we are going to see so much more clarification before from both the NAR and the MLS nationally and locally. Here's what is standing out right now. Big change number one. The NAR will not allow offers of compensation to buyer's agents to be posted on the MLS. Compensation and who will pay the commission will be negotiated off the MLS. That said, sellers will still be able to offer concessions like covering buyer's closing costs, etc., on the MLS platform. However, commission cannot be on the MLS, but it's still the seller still can pay the buyer's commission. Change number two. NAR will now require written representation agreements for MLS participants working with buyers. Along with laying out responsibilities and clarifying expectations, this agreement will cover compensation and how much the buyer's agent will be paid regardless of who pays it. 
Some very smart buyers agents already do this. They have open conversations with their clients about commissions, educating buyers, showing what differentiates them from other agents, and demonstrating the value they bring to the table. Honestly, people, every single buyer's agent worth their salt should already be doing this. This is meant to protect you. This is actually a good thing. After the settlement, it will be mandatory. Now let's talk about how this affects buyers. As I see it, it affects veterans the most. You know those wonderful human beings that serve our country and protect their lives for us? The government has programs in place to help veterans buy homes. One benefit of these programs is that they pay less in out-of-pocket expenses. However, one of the VA regulations is that the veteran is not allowed to pay any brokerage fees. So this new regulation will make it much harder for these heroes to attain the American dream of homeownership when they're the ones protecting us and keeping us in our homes. According to the Department of Veteran Affairs, lender statistics, 400,692 VA loans were done in the US in 2023. The new regulation will have a major impact on buyers. Another concern about this new regulation is actually that means the compensation for the buyer's agent will potentially fall to the buyers. Under these old rules, the seller side most often paid the buyer's agent compensation, even though commission is, was, and always has been negotiable. However, with this new rule, where you can't show the compensation on the MLS, how much and whether the seller is willing to contribute, there's a possibility that buyers may need to cover this cost out of pocket, making their expenses go up. Buyers already face multiple out of pocket expenses when purchasing a home. This cost can include, but not limited to, lender fees, the cost associated with attaining a mortgage loan, even loan origination fees, credit report fees, and appraisal fees. There's also title and escrow fees, fees for the title search, the title insurance, and escrow services, and many more fees in there too. Prepaid expenses that they have to come up with at close of escrow, such as property taxes, homeowners insurance, and possibly private mortgage insurance, PMI or homeowners association dues prorated to the time of purchase. There's also inspection costs, which can include general home inspections, pest inspections, roof inspections, and specialized inspections like well or septic systems. There's legal fees. In some states or situations, buyers may need to pay for real estate attorney services, depending on the state. Recording fees, costs to actually record the deed, the mortgage documents, the appraisal with the local government. Okay, transfer taxes. Taxes imposed by some states or localities on the transfer of property. There are so much more. If a buyer is responsible to cover their agent's compensation, it can significantly increase their upfront costs, potentially limiting their purchasing power or even their ability to buy a home at all. This is especially critical for first time home buyers or those with limited funds who might have trouble coming up with the funds beyond the down payment and traditional closing costs. According to NAR, in 2023, First time home buyers represented 32% of the market. That's nearly one third of all sales. And first time home buyers are most likely to have limited funds. Now let's talk about how this affects the sellers. Of course, this isn't gonna just affect buyers. It also affects sellers and the broader real estate market. If buyers have more out of pocket expenses, the pool of eligible buyers will shrink which in turn will reduce the demand for home, which will affect the sellers. Decreased demand usually leads to longer selling times and lower selling prices. Sellers will have more trouble selling their homes most likely with more favorable terms and they might even be able to sell at all. This is important and think about it. No one is going to work for free. A buyer's agent isn't gonna take all the responsibilities all the liability of representing a buyer without being paid. My marketing for my listings is outstanding and we expose each home to hundreds of thousands of people, both locally and out of the area. Yet statistically speaking, according to Bankrate, dual agency, which is when the listing agent represents both the buyer and the seller, only happens about five to 6% of the time. That means that the listing agents have to cooperate with buyer's agents to actually get the home sold about 94 to 95% of the time you're going to have to deal with the buyer's agent and somebody is going to have to pay them whether it's the buyer or the seller it's also important to know that in 2021 according to nar a fsbo which is a for sale by owner a seller representing themselves to try to save money actually sold on average for ninety five thousand dollars less and in my own experience when i've seen people doing this they don't know what they're doing and they lose money also, according to Orchard.com, in 2022, the median price for a seller without representation was $310,000. With an agent, the median price was $405,000. Again, a $95,000 difference in the negative without representation. Now let's talk about implications on the broader market. 
who else is actually affected. And Active Real Estate Market supports a wide network of professionals and services. There's a ton of people involved in the transaction. Real estate plays a huge role in the world's economy. Being worth more than all the stocks and bonds combined, the real estate industry actually accounts for 18 to 20% of the entire global economy. Just like the strikes in Hollywood affected literally thousands of professionals and businesses, when the real estate industry stalls out, huge chunks of economy takes a hit. For example, home inspectors and appraisal services, repair and renovation specialists, title and escrow companies, loan officers and mortgage brokers, legal professionals, especially in states, situations that require legal representation, home warranty companies, various inspections and specialists like pest, radon, septic, well, and so much more, report and disclosure companies, insurance companies, and here's the deal, I can go on and on. Each of these services play a crucial role in any real estate transaction, and sellers and buyers agents manage all of these parties, which is a lot of responsibility. Fewer transactions mean less demand for these services. It has a negative impact on their businesses, which in turn affects the local economy and ultimately the global economy. The new regulation regarding how buyers agents' compensation is handled are actually designed to add to transparency and fairness, but they also cause some potential problems that we all need to be aware of and to respond to what you need to do as a buyer's agent. Like I said, things are changing and things are always going to change. Your job is to A, make sure your buyers understand the value that you bring to the table and to B, make sure that you bring exceptional value by honing on your skills and being the best darn buyer's agent you can actually be. You need to be confident when you present the written buyer broker agreement and not shy away from discussions about your compensation. They need to understand it. Make sure they understand who is paying for what. You need to learn to be a better communicator about the value you deliver to your buyers. You also need to learn to be a collaborative negotiator and someone who's a better negotiator on the behalf of your buyers. You need to become known as the great problem solver who can keep a deal alive when it hits a bump in the road. If you're doing your job properly, you are worth the compensation and you'll be paid more. Plus, you need to showcase your unique abilities, your expertise, and your knowledge long before someone needs your services. You need to start marketing and creating content and educating people and being helpful to your community so that you become a sought after agent for both buyers and sellers. You need to build a reputation for high integrity and professionalism so that agents are thrilled to work with you. You need to show why they should choose you. I've put together a short piece called Buyer's Guide to Buying Your Perfect Home. In it, I talk about several of the many benefits a great buyer's agent can bring. Here's a quick excerpt. I've put together a really quick video showing you how as an agent you can actually speak directly to buyers to showcase your compensation. Click the next link or somewhere on this page and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Wow, that was a lot of wording. I don't typically like to read my scripts, but on this one, I kind of did because I wanted to make sure that I said everything the correct way when it comes to the commission, the laws, fair housing, and all that great stuff. So this is how you can apply it, right? Don't be scared. It's just change. We change all the time. There's really only two changes make taking place, and here's what you need to know. Things are going to get better. So don't stress. Educate yourself. Differentiate yourself. Add more value. Start marketing well before become a, you want to be a top producer? Become a top marketer and learn how to differentiate yourself. I'm Krista Mayshore. Like or subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.